guys welcome back to another video and today we're working question 8 from the june 2018 mathematics paper 2. so let's go so question 8 says the diagram which come on the next page shows up shows six points of the function y is equal to 3x plus 1 over x the coordinates of these six points are given in the table so they have given us all uh, Five, six. So they're giving us six coordinates with its corresponding y values, and we are to find the missing two y values, which would correspond with 0 0.5 and 2. So we're going to find that using the formula. So the function that they gave is y is equal to 3x plus 1 over x. So to find the from the value for y where x is equal to 0 0.5, we're going to replace 0 0.5 or substitute x for 0 0.5 in the formula. So therefore, what we'll have is y is equal to 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 plus 1 over 0 0.5. So everywhere that we saw x, we replace it with 0 0.5. So therefore, y is equal to 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 will give us 1.5 and 1 divided by 0 0.5 will give us 2. So what we have is y is equal to 3.5. And that is our first answer. y is equal to 3.5 3 when x is 0 0.5. For the other one, using the formula y is equal to 3x plus 1 over x, we're substituting x for 2. So therefore, everywhere in the formula that we see x, we will write 2. So therefore, y is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 plus 1 over 2. y is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, and 1 divided by 2 is a half, or 0 0.5 rather. So therefore, y is equal to 6.5. So therefore, the value for y when x is 2 is 6.5. Five. Part two now says on the diagram given, the ordered pairs shown in the table have been plotted except for the missing ones. And it says using your answers in A1, plot the missing points and connect all the points with a smooth curve. So this is the graph that they're making reference to. And the six points that they gave with the corresponding y values are plotted. And we're now asked to plot the missing points, which we just calculated where x was, where y was 3.5 when x is 0 0.5, and y is 6.5 when x was 2. So we're going to plot those two points. So these are the two points that we calculated 3.5 and 6.5. So this right here, this first, that would be the 0 0.5 from X and Y being 3.5. And this second point is when X is 2, so X is 2, and we calculated Y to be 6.5. And now we're going to connect the points using a smooth enough curve that I could have generated. And this would have been our curve. And this is our answer. Part three now says by drawing a, an appropriate straight line on the diagram, find the approximate solutions to the equation where 3x plus 1 over x is equal to 6. So we're finding the possible values for x. So this was our graph that we just drew on the previous slide. So now we're looking for the point where, at the point of the x values basically, so where the y value is six, so we're looking for the x values for when y is six. So we're drawing a straight line at the point where y is equal to six to find the corresponding x values so we've drawn our dotted lines at this point where this blue line intercepts with the 
the smooth curve that was drawn, this would have given us our first X value. So we extrapolate going down and this is seen with this first dotted arrow. And then we do the same for the second point on the curve where the overlap took place. And this would be where the dotted line, the second dotted line is going down. So these two points on our graph, these are the corresponding X values that would satisfy this equation that is given. So therefore, these two points, X is equal to 0 0.19 and X is equal to 1.82. And these are our corresponding X values. Part B now says the speed time graph below shows information on the first 60 seconds of a car's journey. And part one says calculate the acceleration in meters per second square of the car during stage B. So we're finding the acceleration by calculating the gradient. You could have also used the formula of acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the change in speed divided by the change in time, which is basically what we're going to use by using the gradient, which is gradient, as we know, is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So our, our y2 value would be this first dotted line, which corresponds with stage B. So this is stage B. So this is our first dotted line for y2, which is 40 meters per second. And this is our x2 value for this second dotted line, which is 60 seconds. This third dotted line corresponding with stage B would be or which is 15 meters per second and this fourth dotted line will be or x1 value which is 40 seconds. So we can then go ahead and substitute these values into our formula so that we can calculate the acceleration. So therefore gradient is equal to 40 minus 15 which is our y2 minus our y1 value and that is divided by 60 minus 40 which is our x2 value and our x1 value so therefore when we do 40 minus 15 we get 25 and when we do 60 minus 40 we get 20 and therefore our gradient is equal to 1.25 when we do 20 divided by 25 divided by 20 and hence our acceleration is 1.25 meters per second meters per second square all right so this so this should be meter meters per second square so the second is missing from this or we could have used the formula of velocity which should have been the final speed is equal to the initial speed or initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So this is just an alternative way that we could have used to solve. The final speed was 40 meters per second, and that is equal to the initial speed, which was 50 meters per second plus acceleration, which is what we're trying to find. And the time was the 60 minus 40, which is for the stage B here. So therefore, 40 is equal to 15 plus the acceleration multiplied by the time of 20. Then we have 40 minus 15 as the 15 was added here. So when it comes across the equal sign, it will be subtracting. So basically, we are subtracting 15 from both sides of the equation. So 40 minus 15 is equal to A multiplied by 20. And therefore, what we got is 25 is equal to A multiplied by 20. We're now removing the 20 from the right hand side to take it to the left hand side. So it was multiplying here. So when it comes across, it will be divided. So what we'll have is 25 divided by 20 is equal to the acceleration. And we work it out and we got the same answer of 1.25 meters per second square. And that is our acceleration. So part two asks us to calculate the average speed of the car during stage B. 
So this was our graph. So we're calculating the average speed of the car during this segment, which should have been outlined by our dotted lines here. So what we know is that average speed is equal to distance over time. So therefore, to calculate the distance that we're interested in, which is right here, this is a trapezium, or we could have divided it into a triangle and a rectangle, basically. So if that was the case, we'd have found the area for the triangle and then the area for the rectangle, and those, and we've got the distance covered by the car during that time. Over, we're going to work it for this um, for this particular video using the trapezium, using one figure. So the distance that we require is a trapezium, and we know that the formula is half AB multiplied by H, where H is our height, and half B. AB is the two parallel sides that are given to these two parallel sides. So what we know is that half multiplied by A, which would have been, so AB, we have 40 plus 15, which are the corresponding sides on the speed multiplied by our height, which we're using as a 60 minus 40. So the height of the 60 minus 40. And therefore what we have is A is equal to half, 40 plus 15 is 55, multiply by 20, which is the 60 minus 40, and therefore error would be 550 meters, which are distance. Our distance for this particular um, covered during stage B would have been 550 meters. If you work it out using the R base times height for triangle and our area of length times width for or rectangle, you'd have gotten the same 550, and therefore average speed is equal to 550 divided by 20, which is our time. And when we do that calculation, we get our average speed to be 27.5 meters per second. And that is our answer. This panel says at time t equals 60 seconds, the car starts to slow down with a uniform deceleration of 2.5 meters per second square. Determine how long it will take the car to come to rest. So we're calculating it from this point here, where t is equal to 60 seconds and our speed was 40 meters per second. So we're using the formula method here of V is equal to U plus AT. And as we defined these before, V was our final velocity, U our initial A acceleration T time. What we know is that our final velocity will be zero because we are determining how long it will take the car to come to rest. So therefore zero is equal to our initial velocity of 40, so 40 meters per second, minus an acceleration, which is the deceleration given here of two, 0.5, so it will be negative 2.5 multiplied by t. So we're bringing across our 40 across the equal sign, so it becomes a negative 40 is equal to a negative 2.5 multiplied by t, and therefore t is equal to negative 40 divided by negative 2.5. It was multiplying here, so when it comes across, it will be divided is equal to or t or time. And when we do that working, we know that a negative divided by a negative will give us a positive number. So what we have is that 16 seconds is the time after it starts to decelerate. So the car took 16 seconds to decelerate from this point of 40 meters per second. So if we were now instead writing it, the overall time that the car took to come to a rest should have been 16 seconds plus the 60 seconds that it was already in motion, and that would have been 76 seconds. However, if we're looking at the other way in working it, where acceleration is given by the change in speed divided by the change in time, which would have been similar to our gradient formula, it would have been the acceleration of 2.5 is equal to 40 minus zero divided by our change in time. And when we work that out, we'd have still gotten our time to be 16 seconds that it took to decelerate after it was going for in motion for 60 seconds. And this is the end of our video. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in question nine.